So, welcome to Becoming an Artist Live. Uh, this is a show about travel and art and photography. Every time we do the show, we come to you from like a different place around the world. Um, stuff that we think is cool and interesting. If this is your kind of thing, be sure to click subscribe and you know, share it with your friends. Um, here we are, we are in Tapapa. Is that the right way to say it? Tapapa? You got it right. And I say a lot of Maori words quite wrong. Including uh, Maori. Yeah, including the word Maori itself, I'm sorry. But you're willing to try. That's right. good. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize to the entire culture. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, we're in Wellington and this is a very famous museum, actually. And we're outside of this incredible um, exhibit. Okay, it's called The Scale of Our War. It's about Gallipoli. I saw this about six months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, if you saw the show yesterday with Sir Richard Taylor, this is something that he and Weta Workshop kind of conceived. And I am I see a lot of museums around the world. I see a lot of art. I'm not, it's, I'm not super cynical, but I'm often not moved uh, when I see things. But this is incredibly gotcha. moving. This yeah. got me. Somehow it snuck in there and got me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're here with Olivia, and I want you to interrupt or introduce yourself and uh, say what's going on. Morena. I'm Roger Gascoigne. I'm a senior tour guide and host here at the Patatonga Rewa, and it's my pleasure to bring you on in to see this extraordinary. It's a phenomenon, this thing. It really, really is. Here you are, the genius of the Weta workshop. Literally what Sir Richard Taylor has done is taken a big screen frame grab from his world, the movies, and given you a three-dimensional figure you can walk around. Scale, which is just your information, 2.4 to 1, right? right? right. So nearly okay. two and a half times life size, and the most extraordinary visceral experience to be had right here. These are real characters that were at Gallipoli, and the eight of them are going to take us right on into our whole experience of the disastrous Gallipoli campaign of 1915. From April to December, 75,000 troops hung on by their fingernails while the Turks had literally the moral and physical high ground. It was mission impossible. It was you know, going to end in disaster. This man, Lieutenant Spencer Westmacott from Auckland, 29 years of age at the time, is only going to know a few hours of war before he takes a bullet right through the shoulder here and is evac'd off out to Egypt where the arm is amputated and that's his war done and dusted. Yeah? It's just extraordinary. Yeah, interesting. It's so realistic. It's got, you can see, it's got yeah. so sweat and blood and it looks so real. You could. This is way beyond Madame Tussauds, you'd have to agree, yeah? Next level, um, amazing. So the figure is constructed in fiberglass, the skin is silicon, and each hair has to be individually implanted. So this guy represents about 3,300 man hours of work and dedication. And I mean, really, in his application, be like, what did you do at work today, dear? Well, I made mean, half an eyebrow. Yeah. Have you seen this before? I haven't. Can I touch it? No, you can't. That's a ridiculous question. I know you want to. But it can. Yes. I just thought it looks so real. Like, it looks like it would feel real. That's right. You're just waiting for him to blink, aren't you? Yeah. So what you've got here is just incredible attention to detail. Minute attention to detail. Uh, or example. Well, if, you, if you're going to scale everything up to 2.4 to 1, right. literally, he's got a size 10 boot, so what's yeah. that going to become? About a size 24, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's like my son's shoe size. <laughs> <laughs> he should be wearing an everyday messenger. So, next time we do this, Curtis, let's get him in a peak design bag. Just from another perspective, look at the look at the beads of sweat. Just yeah. every little detail, right up to the cashmere hair that's been implanted up here. So you've got 
uh, human hair, yak, horse or goat hair for the nostrils and the ears, and cashmere for that really downy hair. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wow. Wow. Human hair for the chest. Yeah. <laughs> right. You can probably give up your chest. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> so what a workshop came into your room every night. You would just like pluck Raj's chest hair. Yeah, yeah, and you back by next We need more hair. Like, <laughs> eat more meat. Have, have another piece of lamb, Raj. <laughs> so here you begin, my dears, the actual timeline from the 25th of April, 1915, and it's going to take you right through to December of that same year. And the Red Cross is all depicting a New Zealander who fell on that individual day. So we begin with the landing over here and the extraordinary situation of being literally under a hail of gunfire. Uh, it's even amazing that they got ashore. The Australian <laughs> National Museum has got the actual lighters, the boats, that they came in. Uh, on display at the moment, and they're literally peppered with bullet holes. It's just bizarre. So these guys, their best friend is going to be this, the digging tool. Not exactly I like, adequate. I like that you call it a digging tool. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, very they're, basic description they're out trying right. desperately just to create a little yeah. Uh, yeah. depression that they can yeah. roll into and stay out of the gunfire. Yeah. Um, it's all clay and schisty, it's really horrible to dig in. Yeah. Yeah? So this was going to lead to the most appalling carnage. And they were just boys. They were just boys. There well. you go. That's exactly. young, well, young 18 men. maybe. They probably yeah. would have lied to me in this great adventure. Yeah? Right. Just extraordinary. They were up against Kemal Ataturk. Uh, truly a mighty warrior, and you'll see from the words here, I don't order you to attack, I order you to die. While we are dying, reinforcements will come and we will prevail. I mean, that's pretty yeah. staunch when you think about it, isn't it? Eh? Right. Let's try it. There you go. Excellent. Meet Lieutenant Colonel Percival Stanley. Now, he had actually seen activity at the Boer War in South Africa. Right? So he was used to casualties. He was not used to seeing 400 bodies lying around him down on the beach. Um, and he's got to make those triage decisions. Right. You know, who to right. attend to first. I see what you mean, Trey, about it being very moving. My goodness, it's It's, <laughs> it's weird to see humans at the scale. It's, but, it's, yeah, it's good weird. It's really, really good weird. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's going to start maybe it's four so days in the creation. You're actually looking at the world's biggest toupee. There it is. Chaos became a toy. I thought that was dark. I try to lighten up because right. very soon you're going to start choking up at the, at the oh. waist and the, and the just the. Really yeah, 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 so you know, it's, yeah. it's very um, something about being that size. It's hyper realistic. Absolutely. Go ahead, sir. So come on through. Okay. We're trying to make order from chaos here. By the way, hello, um, Janaina from Brazil. Hey. We have uh, Duck from Germany watching. Uh, we have Charity Hedges from Kentucky in the U.S. Daphne from New York City. Um, hello, everybody. Wow. You guys, if you come, if you guys come here, you've got to go to this museum. It's ridiculous. You just so yeah, do. Yeah. I'm handing this back to Curtis. All right. Okay. Here's where um, a remarkable man, Lieutenant Colonel William Malone. Um, of the Wellington Regiment takes uh, control of a chaotic scene and insists on order and hygiene and uh, just a, a discipline that needed to be implemented uh, to keep these boys out of the Turkish gun Ottoman Empire uh, gunfire. Yeah. See, Turks haven't happened yet. That's Ataturk himself later on. So we're taking on the Ottoman Empire. 75,000 men have come ashore. And of course the Turks are going to try and repel them right back and repulse them right back into the sea. Not even one month goes by before they actually have to declare an armistice. A Turkish officer comes over the hill with a white flag and says, can we stop so we can bury the dead? Because the stench is just so bad uh, that men can't think. Although why would you want to think in a situation yeah. like that? But yeah. So in quite literally, this bizarre situation, in the morning, a whistle blew. The guns stopped. The men came up, met each other, started burying the uh, dead as fast as they possibly could. And later on, about four o'clock in the afternoon, the whistle blows again, back in your trenches. The next whistle, start the war. And for a golden moment, 
nobody fire. Yeah. Right. Just, oh, but of course, if an officer says, begin, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah, the war's on again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what else do we have here? Well, we live in the CSI world, don't we, guys? So um, nowadays, the kids want to know what's going to happen to you in a, in a war situation. So we're just going to put a bullet through your brain there. Oh. And... There's the outcome, yeah. right? The outcome is not good. <laughs> not good. <laughs> not good. So if we... A lot of um, exchange of hand grenades between right. the two sides. They were very close to, together. So they could actually... Look, here, here we go. This is just horrendous. Wow. Because this guy, watch him, uh, knows what's about to happen. It's going to go bad, yeah. man. It's going to go very bad. Can you throw a sandbag on top of it before it goes? No, too late. It just rips him apart. And that's what upset um, Percy Fenwick, oh. trying to repair these oh. kinds of wounds. Even the nurses would say the bullets were, you know, they were capable relative to what was happening with shrapnel. And, uh, just awful. But here you are, the illustration of the fact that they're so close together that they actually can hold conversations. Why are you shooting right. at me? Right. I'm just following orders. Yeah, me right. too. <laughs> you know, yeah. How's your yeah. wife and family? Yeah. Oh, oh, what? Yeah. Now, yeah. they're... I can't see these so ironies, well. these just horrific ironies. You're a very good tour guide, by the way. Yeah, you're, you're this like, is, this is very you're the interesting. Most awesome tour guide I've ever been with. <laughs> oh, 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 thank you so much. I can listen that's to you for hours. Okay. Yeah, that's huge. Really, I mean, I meant to say that you're really interesting. <laughs> say, we have a question from uh, Siraj from okay. Pakistan. We hey, wanted to know how, how long it took to build this uh, museum. The museum? Yes, yeah, so this, 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 this exhibit. This exhibit, yeah. this exhibit excuse um, me. Um, Let's go for a couple of years, shall we, Shiraj? Because um, it, was a, it was a very difficult concept. How do you commemorate? There's nothing to celebrate about war whatsoever. But these people did go through an experience, and it's worth commemorating. So after a lot of manifestations, here we are with the outcome from Richard Taylor in particular. This became, I guess, if we're being realistic, Look at this situation with the, with yeah. the flies. And, oh right. my god. There's an opportunity to come out from under Peter Jackson's shadow. And yeah, right. here's the implication that those flies would have been up on the bodies of the corpses. The corpses uh, are in mud uh, and then they're flying down and landing on your body. Uh, no. So right. more men were going to get seriously ill yeah. than are being killed by bullet fire. Yeah? Gosh. Jack Dunn has. Uh, pneumonia and falls asleep on duty. That is an offence punishable by death. So he goes through the court martial process, and yes, he's condemned to death. He's a good fellow, though, with a great record, so his uh, sentence is commuted. And guess what? He's Four days later, he's condemned to death already. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. And guess what? It gets to happen that way, but four, four days. days later. Gosh. Up on Chunuk Bear. Here's where you go to see the conditions that they endured throughout. Um, let's see, you've got your basic equipment stored away here, which is pretty basic. The food, I'll just get rid of the flies for you. <laughs> uh. see, see the hardtack biscuits? Those you have to have moisture to soften them up. Otherwise, otherwise you wind up with broken teeth all over the place so oh. dentistry becomes this whole new growth industry there but principally <laughs> you are basically up against lice fleas ticks and your day was spent trying to pick the lice out of the seams of your clothing right out of your armpits and be growing by the way all of this just sounds like uh, what happens at my home with my children yeah basically it's glibly at home well We'll just try not to let you fall into Shedder's ditch over here and bring you on through. Our soldiers did not have tin helmets until they got to the Western Front. So how much cover is that going to give you in amongst all of them? That was the helmet? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, right. I, think, a, I think you were wearing one of these this morning yeah, in the rain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're a dead man. <laughs> yes. Come on through. The Maoris, the Maoris are um, desperate to be involved. Uh, they petition the British, give us a go, let us prove what fighting warriors we are. They were garrison troops out at Malta or back in Egypt, but then eventually they prevail and they're invited. It turns out they're brilliant snipers, expert machine gunners, and they make a mighty, mighty contribution. Now we're gonna go through the 
trench. It's our hope hurt. that we don't get shot, guys. <laughs> so here we come. The noise. This is cool, isn't it, Curtis? Yeah, yeah it's very really cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Give me. <laughs> 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 Does this come through? Oh, wow. Yeah. This guy is on hiding to the door. Oh, 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 man. That is so bad. <laughs> 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 now, to take the high ground, known as Chanak Bear, we're going to need serious machine gun support, okay? <laughs> come with me. Okay. Here we are. Take a look at this. This tableau here just rips you apart. Mm. Yeah? Here, I'll, I'll take the camera. Yeah. Here, why don't you stay with me, tell the story while I move the camera around. These three gentlemen are in support of the troops that are trying to get up to the very high ground. Mr. Warden there has unfortunately been killed. So his number two, Friday Hawkins over there, jumps on and starts firing up about 250 yards away. Look at the look on his face. Yeah, it's determination. It? He yeah. takes a bullet right through the wrist, so he's out of the action. So you've got Ricky Hana Kakit over here, and Kakit jumps on, and he unfortunately takes a bullet right through the base of the neck. He lies there for about an hour, and then decides, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to crawl two or three kilometers back down the cliffs to the hospital. He makes it. You'll be pleased to know that he's the father of nine children when he returns to New Zealand. Well, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> Look at the detail. The exquisite detail in these, in these models. It is just breathtaking. Got to come and see this, guys. In fact, we can almost put a challenge out. Find the wrong detail. I doubt that we will. Right, now we've got to really, really try and get this high ground. Chuck it there. There we go. Now this is where fighting gets really down and dirty. William Malone actually refused an order from the British uh, commanders to take the Wellington Regiment up over the top in broad daylight. He said, no, we're not doing that. We'll go at night. Um, I mean, at least he had a counter-proposal, if you like. Um, damn colonials. But anyway, he, uh, he basically said, look, I'll take the men up at night. I'll put big white patches on their back so that anybody else can see them in the moonlight. Um, they'll put Hessian around their boots. They won't smoke. They won't talk. They will not carry a rifle, just a bayonet. Uh, you would not want just a bayonet when you're facing the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> well, a bayonet and a spade. Wise words. Wise words. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. profound, actually. Yeah, but in fact, <laughs> it prevails. And they prevail. They win that little encounter. Uh, so against, they've, against they've surprised the Ottomans. Yeah, absolutely. Sadly, William Malone is killed through friendly fire. Um, and there ends the career of a truly remarkable, charismatic leader. Right. What you've got is mechanised mass murder now. Here we have, of course, the machine guns. And now you are able to put out, what, 600 rounds per minute? Just when it couldn't get any worse. Yeah. If we get these. Yeah. 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 And of course, everyone's still adhering to old European styles of warfare. So we're marching shoulder to shoulder yeah. and we're doing box formations and so on, which are totally in inappropriate against this. Right. No, this is just no, going to mow no. you down. And that's literally what happened Cut up there it. behind you. Look, look at that picture. Now, where Jesse Wallingford is claiming 5,000 men for his guns. So we have some people watching. Here's Matt is watching from a naval air station in California. Wow. Hey, Matt. Wow. Hey, Matt. What's going on? And uh, this is with the U.S. military. Watching from Germany. Watching from Germany. Hello, Doc. How's it going? New York City. Guten Morgen. Kentucky. Hey. Guten Morgen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we had Sarah says she was at Tapapa over Christmas break and just wanted to thank everybody for how amazing it was. Delightful yeah. to yeah. It is here. great. Come back. Yes. Right. Okay, and now we're going to tug at your heartstrings. Okay. Come and meet. So this will be the last thing we probably Charlotte see. Yeah. yeah. Sister Charlotte Le Galais, known as Lottie, who joined a hospital ship 
to be near her brother who was on shore at Gallipoli. And this is the moment that she discovers that her brother had been dead for the past four months. My hands and feet Because of her family back in New Zealand for being in slow motion, some But it's taken that long for the information to get back to her down the Mahino, the hospital ship. It was from and Derek. Again, just a triumph of the modeling so skill. Too soon. Look at that. Oh, just that little whistle of the air blowing in the air conditioning. It's enough to just go rip your heart out, isn't it? Hey? Yeah. Yeah. One final aspect to this for you is to come on through. And here, God Almighty Himself, Lord Kitchener comes to Gallipoli in November and says, right, we've got to get the men off, make it so. And so in December, over four bright moonlit nights, 46,000 men are evacuated off the peninsula. Are you going to tell me the Turks did not know? Come on. And a Turk will have achieved his goal and probably said to his generals, let him go. There's 130,000 Corpses lying all over this peninsula. Yeah. Enough of the killing. Enough. Yeah. Yeah. He also uttered the most beautiful words ever to the mothers of the dead. Right. He basically said that they have become our sons and we will take them to our bosom. They will lie beside our boys and they will be regarded as our sons. Sorry, I get choked up every yeah. time. <laughs> it's remarkable that somebody could be so. Uh, reconciliatory a word. Uh, or forgiving yeah. and when you think that the Turks invite us back every year to commemorate yeah. this it is extraordinary it's very very extraordinary it is yeah. just, uh, and so now one well, again one of those bitter ironies where the boys having gone through all of this would reasonably expect to come home to New Zealand and right. no you're on your way to the Western Front Belgian France and the horror uh, which, you know, the casualty rate's probably four or five times what was uh, occurring at Gallipoli. So a lovely little gesture, just take the poppy, fold it, and create that wonderful international symbol, and bring it over here. You did that much better than I did. Place it. <laughs> <laughs> and place it at the feet of Sergeant Cecil Malthus, who actually did survive both in Kaustas, Gallipoli and the Western Front. And what Richard Taylor has done is to capture that, that uh, the stare, the thousand yard stare. You know, those almost sightless eyes. Gosh, I just can't look at these without feeling really yeah. emotional. They're, they're so Well, there's major. a generation that were quite literally rendered mute. Right. You know, yeah. what did you do in the war, Granddad? How could yeah. he be? Him to tell you right. what they'd gone through, what, what he'd been ordered to do, what he had to do to survive. Yeah. Just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for this amazing tour. You, I mean, I, I said that you were one of my favorite tour guides. You were absolutely down on your table. I see a lot of it, but it's great. And even though it's the second time I've seen it, it's still just as moving. Oh, good. And I'm sure you get moved every oh, time, I, even I though you do it hundreds do. of times. Yeah. How yeah. Well, just the futility, yeah. The, yeah. the pointlessness of it. And, yeah. and that context is just awful. How much yeah. longer is the exhibit going to It'll be here for the next three years. So it re it's reflective of 1914-18 to 2014-18. Right. After that, who knows? This is a must-do if you're in Wellington. It's, yeah. It's, it's in a way, it, it reminds me of the futility and pointlessness of this show. So, <laughs> <laughs> someday Sir Richard Taylor will make an exhibit about the show and people will go through and they'll be very moved like, oh god. You did not just go by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> no, I started to make a joke. I started to end on a high you note. You need to end on a high yeah. note. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. guys, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah. Thanks for all the comments. We'll get to check them out later and um, we'll see you next time. Actually, we have a show coming up very soon. Uh, back at the Museum Mart Hotel. We'll tell you a really weird story about how they, they moved an entire hotel, which used to be literally right here. It was. On a train car over to where it is. How do you move a hotel on train? I don't know. But we will find out soon. Sure. All right, see you soon. Thanks. Bye bye.